Hi. This video will give you the portal, the key to finding the true self. The self is always present, it is always there, but something happens that blocks full access to it. And when I say full, what I mean is we always have partial access. Um, we don't have full access. And this video will be focusing on what blocks full access. And if you understand this video, your whole life of seeking ends. This video will absolutely end the cycle of seeking. Okay. There is only one obstacle, and that obstacle is identification. And let's see how this works. And incidentally, I did a chart on this. I actually did two charts, and I'm going to put them on my, my, my blog, and you can download those charts and take a look at them. Uh, they're probably especially helpful after seeing this video. First, we have the self. The self is an unseen aspect. The self can be thought of as this, and, and this is a, a metaphor that Alan Watts liked using. The eyes see, but they can't see seeing. The self is exactly the same, same thing. It cannot see itself. And this is the whole knot uh, that prevents everyone from immediately becoming awake to their true identity. Okay. Let's see why this happens. There is the self. And then the self, within the self, there is this mind. And what you're seeing now in this video, you are seeing your mind. You're not seeing my mind. You're not even hearing my words. You are hearing your mind perceiving this video. And, what, and that, that gives us an amazing insight. Everything we experience, we experience as mind. Everything is the mind. So, you know, when you read the words or hear the words of the Buddha or of Jesus or of, or of uh, Hitler or of Sarah Palin, it's all your mind. Okay? That's the first part. And how does the mind perceive? It perceives through the faculty of attention. That when we hear or see something, for us to notice it, we must be attentive to it. It can be very brief attentive, like hearing your name being shouted out from an unexpected place, and you go, whoa, what was that? Or it can be very focused attention, like you might do uh, while reading a book. So, so it's all, this world of objects is perceived through the mind's capacity to be to, or to possess attention. And so the mind looks out and experiences this world, and what does it see? It sees a universe of objects. And because it sees a universe of objects, it makes a very important assumption. It assumes that if everything is an object, then I too must be an object. And that is what causes the seeking process. It is the belief that I am an object. I'm a terrific object. I'm, a, I'm a, a brilliant object. I'm a stupid object. I'm a shitty object. I'm a rich object. I'm a poor object. I'm a white object. I'm a male object. Fill in the blank. Take your pick. But the mind experiences a universe of objects and then assumes it too is an, an object. And within this entire sphere of objective perception, there is identification with one subset of objects. And the subset of identification is the brain. And the, what the brain does, it creates stories out of these objects. The story of, hey, this is my beautiful house, and hey, this is my beautiful wife, and starting to sound like a song from the, from the 70s. And... So it creates all these stories. And the stories are terrific. The objects are amazing or they're horrible. But it's all objects, whether it's scenes of horrible cruelty or scenes of beautiful generosity. It's all objects. And within that world of objects is the me object, 
which is often linked to our body and our, think, our thoughts and our feelings. That subset of objects gets the label of me, and onto that there is identification. But always, it's my experience. I am having this experience. It's, it belongs to me and only me. And there is truth to that, because it, it only does belong to you and you or, or to me or to whomever. It's, it is your experience. Okay, so the, the only obstacle I said was this, identification. The belief, it's a belief like, like a belief in the tooth fairy that this is me. That is the only obstacle. It is the only belief that needs untying. So question, is this me? That's a really better question than even who am I, which was made famous by Ramana, Ramana Marishi. Who am I? I prefer the question, is this me? I mean, I really like, um, I really like the music of, uh, of Bach and Mozart and Brahms, but is that me? No, it's, a, it's something the mind likes. It's my, it is the mind attached to this body. But I see this, and I see this world of objects, and I even see the identification with it. I even see that. And we see how the, the mind navigates through life by saying, this is what I desire, this is what I fear, this is what I need. And um, I, knew, I know in my chart there's a fourth category. Oh, and because of memory, I can make decisions about desire, uh, about need, and about fear. What I fear is all fueled by memory. So, so the mind navigates through life, this universe of objects, based upon memory. And I see this. And more than anything else, I see the identification with it. I'm a very social person. I like talking with people. So I see that and I go, well, that's me. Is that true? Wouldn't you exist without these social engagements? You may not be as happy, but wouldn't you still exist? Oh, well, I'm a, I'm male. Look, uh, if I took off my clothes, you would see for sure. Um, and I go, well... I'm seeing it, but even if that were removed, all, all identity, if my eyes were closed, I'd still be here, this self. It's only identification which is the obstacle. And once identification dissolves, you are free. So, you know, you can forget the words of the Buddha or of Jesus or Ramana or of Joseph Stalin or of uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin. Uh, take your pick. Um, you can enjoy them all, you can dislike them. They're all objects. They're all temporary identities. Ah, and, and the stronger our identifications, the more, the more messed up our lives will be because we're very strongly asserting boundaries. You know, this is where I end, and this is where you begin. And they're all belief-based, they're false. It's like believing in the tooth fairy. It's all nonsense. Because once the, 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 the energy of identification dissolved, it doesn't really matter. You don't care anymore. You just do what you like and you're, you're relaxed and you can breathe and everything works better. Because that murky cloud of identification, that, that, which is, we often use terms like ego, isn't operating with any strength. So anyway... I'm going to put uh, two diagrams which, of which this talk is based on. And by the way, you'll notice my persona. It's sort of highly energetic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm raised in the Northeast and in, in a very urban kind of environment. I grew up in a very competitive household. This is simply the way my body is. It is not my identity. And that's the way your body is and your way of being. Stop fighting it, because resistance is one of those evaluations which the mind does as it navigates through life. Forget about it. I'm going to do a second video about, about taking this the next step. I might even do that right when I'm done with this one, because all this is very fresh to me, and, um, and see what you think. It might come, uh, give or take, a couple of hours later. All right, well, I hope you like this. Went on much longer as usual, which is not as good as I hoped, which is my normal. And uh, thanks for watching.